Okay, I'll call the Planning and Zoning Commission meeting to order. It's meeting 1808 and it's 6.30 p.m. Um, we have our forum with all our regular members present. Welcome, Joe. We're very happy to have you join us. Happy to be here. And now that we have lost our chair and have a new member, we can elect a new chair. So. Oh, I thought it automatically goes to you. I don't think so. Not on the the way, like, like the president. We I nominate we, Ian <laughs> as a new chairman. I second. If it's a, if this is an order. Okay. So we have a nomination that I fill in as chair and um, a second. So all those in favor? Aye. Uh, okay. okay. So got the ball. <laughs> now we need a vice chair. I nominate Mike Walsh. I second. Okay. Okay. <laughs> we have a motion and a second for vice chair. Mike Kowalski, all those in favor? Aye. 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 So okay. he's secretary now, so he has to be bumped from yep. the secretary. Now we need a secretary. I nominate Jim Thurs okay. for secretary. Second. Okay, we have a nomination for secretary and a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 <laughs> <laughs> I, I started out as secretary a long time ago. <laughs> you are again. Um, do we have any added agenda? Do we have any legal notices? Um, for this upcoming meeting, we've got the referral that's to Kraj, so we'll be skipping any meeting, which is why there's no on this agenda. Okay. No legal notices. Public participation. We have no public visiting in the room, but we have public um, visiting through Zoom. So is there anybody from the public who would like to say something to the commission or talk about something that is not listed on the agenda? Uh, Elliot and I would just like to wish uh, Anne good luck in her new role as chair and Joe, Joe is a new member of the Planning and Zoning Commission. Thank you, Jason. Thank you, Elliot. <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> I haven't talked yet. <laughs> All right, yeah. What's my real name, Elliot? Then the what? Huh? Who am I, Elliot? Oh, he's muted. So he says something bad. <laughs> he calls me JoJo. Oh. How old is Elliot? Three, I think. Oh, okay. Is he? No, I'm trying to think. That's enough. I'll That's enough. My younger grandson. So he's not quite three yet. The speech is really good. Um, minutes. We'll go there next. Yes. I assume no other public participation. Anybody else? No. Okay. Then we'll move on to approval of minutes. Does anyone have anything? respect to the minutes. I read the minutes and I'm satisfied with them as written. I noticed one typo on page five, the second bullet, the third line, it says T-A-T, -T. I would change it to that. You can see the H in there. Any other edits? Okay. Somebody want to make a motion to approve the minutes with that minor edit? I'll make a motion that we approve uh, the minutes of regular meeting 1807 with the alteration on page five. And the remaining as presented. Is there a second to that motion? Second. 
Right there. Okay. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor of approving the minutes? Aye. Aye. I'll abstain. Okay. That was abstain. That brings us to receipt of applications. We have an application PZ 2021-24 for a special use permit at 17 Thompson Road to allow outdoor live entertainment and outdoor alcohol consumption. We can't take that up tonight because it hasn't been through its notice procedures yet. So this is just, yep, just to be received and uh, we'll schedule a public hearing. Now I have a quick question. Do we receive a sketch with it and the layout or we don't care where the where they're setting the band up and any of that? Yeah, so all the application materials will give you when he presents. Oh, okay. Hearing. I just give you the application so you know what you're about to get for next week. For next week. Okay. Now, this wasn't something that was uh, allowed in with the COVID uh, the outdoor dining. So this, there was, there were some previous approvals that were granted with conditions that if certain things happen, they come back. So, um, Part of that was the extension of the liquor permit to allow the consumption outside and then the entertainment. So um, they're not really doing outdoor dining. So parts of it may, but they're a little bit greater than what the executive orders allow. And he wants to do it permanently. So for him, he already has approval for the tent. It's better to, to do it so that he can, I imagine. Because I, I thought I heard that some of that outdoor dining was going to become permanent after this restriction. Yeah, so one of the things that one of the legislative changes is that towns have to, we, like we talked about last time, allow it as of right, which means they still have to come to you. We just can't require a public hearing. Gotcha. So we're trying to memorialize all of this. We can get his liquor control application. All that stuff. Okay. Okay. Next on the agenda is the performance bonds, actions, permit extensions, Road acceptance. Do we have anything in that category? We do not. We do not have any continued public hearings. We do not have any new public hearings. We don't have any old business. <laughs> so that brings us to new business. And there we have um, proposed text changes to section 406 and 407. I think we can take them together. Yeah. Because to me, it's one regulation. Um, Mike, do you want to explain? Yep. So, um, recognizing that we had a, a, a wall in the uh, agenda, I, I started by taking what I consider to be two of the least controversial adjustments to the regs that are required based on the legislative changes. The first one. Um, is section 406, um, which is our, our, our living area requirements, which deals with um, how big a dwelling unit can be or needs to be, rather, based on our regulations. And I apologize if the track changes are complicated, but Word doesn't let us print a, a simple markup, so I have to do it both ways. Um, so you should have a clean version, which basically is, if approved exactly as I wrote it, suggested the black. it, the black and white is, is my proposal. It incorporates the modifications, the additions and deletions. And then the red version is the track changes. Um, it's the only two ways that we're the letters go or printed. So um, I'm proposing to make a change to 406 or suggesting you consider a change to 406. Um, which is essentially eliminating the minimum unit sizes that are there now to be in line with the legislative changes. But um, basically, just make sure that it complies with all minimum standards of any applicable building, housing, or health code. That is what the statute says. So um, if there's a housing code that says it's a unit has to be X number of square feet, then they'll have to comply with that. But we're not going to have a separate set of standards. Um, so that's 406. So how are we going to know if somebody's in compliance with when they come before us? Well, that won't be, we won't judge the compliance. 
it'll be through the their building permit application or if they're a multifamily, any anything with North Central related to um, review of the septic. So we would, we're just sort of pointing them to those applicable codes, but we wouldn't verify compliance. So this is this is basically current, and this is exactly. So on, on letter D, you're still they're not to, to exceed 900 square feet, correct? Oh, uh, oh, D jumped. Oh, sorry. Oh, 407. Yeah. Yeah, I can go through that. Does anybody has questions on 406? But the one question I have on 406, and this is just from having worked with the state. We were never allowed to adopt a regulation that cites into the future. So the word as amended, we were never allowed to do by the lawyers because there isn't a public process where people are allowed to consider it. Yeah. I don't know, maybe it's allowed in town regulations. I mean, I know of many regulations that cite it. The only reason I put it there is because this regulation will have an effective date. And I don't want there to be confusion that we're citing a specific code. So if the health code is updated between now and then. It'll be it'll you don't have to comply with whatever those standards are rather than trying to you know reference a code based on a specific date that we approved it. But I can absolutely I mean I can I, mean, I, I would, would be it as that. just at, at, with the most recent code or most recent standard or something to that effect or uh, I, to I mean, me it's nice if you could do as amended because you wanna adopt those changes as they happen, but they never let us state level. We always had to keep revising our regulations. Very <clears throat> annoying process. I mean, I could modify it to say standards as set forth in all current and applicable building, housing, and or health codes, and remove as amended. So, I mean, it, no, that's what you're trying to get to. The, the, the sure. latest and greatest, the most current ones. Right? I think you are. That's not a problem. Okay. So how's that going to read it will say it'll ultimately read no dwelling unit shall be erected or created that does not comply with the minimum standards as set forth in all current and applicable building housing and or health codes gotcha and then we'll strike as amended anybody else have any questions Questions on 407? So, okay, 407. So again, um, we have to allow accessory apartments or accessory dwelling units as of right, which means we can't require a public hearing. I added the term accessory dwelling unit because that's what the language in the statute reads. And so I felt like it was good to have that be consistent. Um, Do you have to that term because I didn't see it in we define of the regs. we define accessory apartments um I think uh, yes so which is why I didn't delete the word accessory apartments altogether because I wanted it to still track um I can add it to that if you want but basically so the things we have to do are we have to allow them as of right and we have to allow attached or detached um, we can't say how big they have to be, but we can say how big they can't be bigger than a certain amount. So um, I went through the existing um, language that we have in place, and I basically kept what I felt was appropriate and not uh, didn't deviate from the, the statute. Um, so it still requires that they show a floor plan, which demonstrates they have separate cooking, bathing, restrooms, and sleeping facilities. Um, and then um, for detached units or units which will result in the expansion of the structure's footprint, a site plan has been provided to demonstrate compliance. It's very standard. Um, I added a, an ADU with a maximum of one bedroom shall be allowed for parcel, which means they're not going to build a two or three bedroom accessory dwelling unit out in the backyard. There's room for discussion on that if you guys have thoughts. And you can only have one single accessory unit per house or can you have 
basically. Yes, so I'm, yes, I'm saying you can only have one ADU and that ADU will have one bedroom. That's how I've written it. We can tweak that um, if you want to be more flexible. Well, I'm, I'm trying to see how this now applies to these tiny houses. You know, we're, we're talking 800 or even smaller. I think some of these things are. Right. So an accessory room like 200, 200 square feet. It would still, it's still going to be inherently tied to the house. Um, so it'll be connected to the same septic system, um, you know, and still has to function accessory to, but for all intents and purposes, if somebody wanted to drop a tiny house. Because those are usually stand that they have like reservoir tanks and pump and all things. Like a trailer. But yeah, you, you basically have, a camper. Mm -hmm. but you, you, have, you can't have it both ways in the sense of, if you want to have a tiny house and you want to be living there temporarily and you want to be pumping into a tank, that's fine, I think, for the health code, but you can't live there permanently and pump into a tank. I, I think, if, if, I, I, if I remember right, uh, I think the town has a minimum standard. A uh, house has to be 1,200 square feet. Nothing smaller than 1,200 square feet can be can be constructed in the county. Well, I think that's, that's what changed. this is changed. That, this yeah, is going to change this. That's what, well, yeah, and so well, the, if, if there's a house exists, less than 1200, it must be predate. Yeah, but okay. Predate that. So if but, you have a house that's 800. But now, now you have the kid that comes back from school, instead of living in the basement, he wants to put a tiny house in the backyard. And live in there instead. But the house had to be at least twelve hundred. So the, the main house is yeah. This is for an accessory dwelling yeah. now. So now you can put one of these tool sheds in the backyard, and the and the kids going to live in the tool shed. Well, it's attached. No, it doesn't have to be attached with this. Yes. That's true. So that's kind of what I'm wondering. Well, if he lives in a basement, it doesn't have any minimum stand. Right, right. But I'm saying this could be another thing that could come before us now. Is instead so, of yeah. you know having well, having the. The adult child living in the house, they're they're now putting in a tiny house in the backyard, and that's where he's living. Well, yeah. how can they tie into a septic system that was designed for a three-bedroom house? Well, that's what I'm saying. Is the tiny houses house. don't, so they use a pump and haul. Yeah. Or they have that. So here's so does it say here that they have the tiny house. Right. So here's what we can do. We can beef up our apartment accessory apartment definition to um, include language to make it clear that an accessory dwelling unit is not something located on wheels or, or constructed for temporary habitation, right? So an RV or something like that would not qualify. The language that was also added says that um, for the purposes of a health department review, adding a single bedroom via an ADU does not trigger an entirely new need to show code compliance septic area in the whole nine yards. So that- But you're only a flat, the size of your septic determines how many bedrooms you're allowed in the house. So if you're adding the bedroom, when you and you're already at the max, yeah. as the house is old, you'd have to expand the septic. My understanding is that you can usually go up one bedroom with what you have, um, but- uh, I don't think no, that. I don't think you can. I don't think it's central. Like yeah. Well, in all the other places that I am, you can usually go up a bedroom um, without having to expand the, the limits of the system. Um, but there was the long and short of it is from the health department side, there were there was language added that specifically created a carve out for an accessory dwelling unit because generally speaking, two the units. Statute yes. The because two units pumping to the same system are a community system, which requires, I think, a state level of review. So they created something that basically says, in the case of an accessory dwelling unit, using the same septic system is not triggering those additional layers of review. So a loophole around that too is people can also say the bedroom in the house is not an office. Well, no, because they would have because it would be based on. If the housing building or health code said it's better, it's better. Okay. So predate regardless, so. regardless of what the use is. Right. So if it's got a door and a window and a closet, it's a bed. Okay. So the health department um, and <clears throat> likely the building official would, would catch that. And that's why we require we're going to require this more. I, okay. One problem I have really with the only one is that uh, you you excluded that uh, it has to be a blood relative. Right. But you can rent it out too. Well, you're not supposed to. Here but it said you, can, you cannot rent it up. But we have so to allow the period of less than 90 days. 
cannot that rent means it that out. That Otherwise, that people, I put one on my house and rent it out for a thousand bucks a month. And well, now, after this, I think you can. And under the new legislation, you can. Oh, that's the bubble. Yeah, I'll see. Is that right? Because Are you sure of that? I am. <laughs> we now have to allow the massive right. So every zone now is considered multi family? Well, it's, or, well <laughs> again, it's an accessory going to the owner still has to live on the property. That's so this correct. so so the idea is if it's accessory to and the owner's on the property, it's not going to become this party house because you're still living there, you're still the responsible party. But, <laughs> Well, yeah, it depends you know, on the uh, age of yeah, those if they, they, can, if they can put ten of them up there, they will. Well, know? that's why the housing code, that's why the building code, that's why create, that's that's why all these other things are important, and that's why we're limiting the total size. Yeah. But this is this is where we are now. Yeah. I mean, our old regulations is it obviously, as you know, I'm sure, you know, you had to have a blood. You know, did, and every two or three years, you had to come back to the town hall and certify that you did fat. And if they left, you had to take out what, the stove and something else. So it was not considered a. Oh, really? Yeah. And that made sense to me. I thought that was great. Because I can, I can envision, I can envision, you know, if I were a tobacco farmer, I, I love that work. He said, you know, I could have my help living, I could have six of them living in that work with a fire. Yeah. <laughs> So does, it, does, it doesn't specifically state anywhere here that they have to hook up to sanitary. So it'll just be yeah. If, if there's based on whatever, because you know, some people have septic, some people have sewer. So it'll just be. I mean, the health department will still do those reviews, and they'll have to demonstrate that. But it it uh, would be up to them. One one last question: What happens if the if the owner of the home dies, or gets, if unfortunately they get killed in an auto accident or something? What happens to that uh, <clears throat> person living in the uh, whatever the will says? Well, I think if they're a tenant, if they have a bona fide lease, they're con they're considered to be a tenant under Connecticut law, so they would have to be treated. You know, they'd have to be evicted or they'd have to be treated that way. But the new owner of the property under the will would decide, and they didn't want them. Then they'd have to evict them. Because that you no matter what, I mean, there's no, I know we're off the wagon, but yeah. there's a there's a there's a, something called the Relocation Act, which exists in Connecticut. So, for example, if the town goes in and condemns a building that's got four units, fire marshal or building official or health department, it says this is not livable. The town shutting that building down makes the town eligible for relocating those parties, and I'm there's a statutory. Hmm? Responsible, financially responsible. Yeah, and all their stuff too. When they take them down to storage facility yep. and they store it. And there's a statutory the number for the amount of money that the town can expend per person and put them up in another location. So because they're a tenant, they yeah. you know, got a bona fide right to be there. Mm -hmm. oh. Oh, right. I think it's I think it's a great idea, but it's getting complicated as compared to what I. Yeah. Well, I think the statute okay. is overrules us. Yeah, mm -hmm. of course. I think it's true. You're on the right track, Mike. There are a lot of towns actually that do allow accessory dwelling units as of right, and it's not been that big of a surge. Uh, limiting the to one bedroom and requiring that someone to live there, you know, it's not something that's going to generate that much. And yeah, a lot it of won't be an absolute example. <clears throat> No. A number of towns that I work with are in close proximity to Yukon. So, you know, in those That's cases, they be something. The problem. But they generally want to live with a number of people in one bedroom. Not so attractive. So, all the appearance guidelines that we had before, those all have to be stricken also? Yeah. I mean, I because they were very subjective and as, zone, as a zoning permit without a public hearing, I can't have a subjective requirement. Um, And the building code again, when you're talking about connecting to an existing house and, and pitch of a roof for snow loads and all that stuff, they pretty much are going to get most of that. Yeah, I'm, I'm thinking much more down the, the detached dwellings. Usually, it would be the attached accessory, you try to blend it in so it looks like it's part of the original house, but uh, how these detached ones, um, 
I see there's probably going to be a market for a pretty fat, you know, pot of farmers going to be selling these yeah. things. You know? Yeah. 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 <laughs> a very clear, I mean, accessory dwelling unit shall be designed, that's one unit shall be designed so that it is uh, of similar architectural as to the existing house. I mean, and too subjective that one. Yeah, I mean, if basically, if it's, you know, if the house is X, you know, the dwelling unit has to be X. I mean, if we could think of something that's very concise and Measurable. Okay. You know, I mean, worst case scenario, somebody takes a sealant cargo container and modifies that. You know? I have a lot of people call about that, and then they usually talk to the building official, and it doesn't, you know, okay. to get it to meet the building code for like insulation and uh, heat loss and running heat electrical. Rest, heat rest. And I think I've heard building officials say that they're not really even intended to be subject to the building code. So I don't know, you know, how to issue, how you issue a permit for them, but. That's a weird question. Are there any towns doing this that have clear, let's say, visual standards of what it looks like? I haven't seen any yet because we're all pretty much in the same boat and doing it at the same time. I can look. And it's just, it's, I think what people are saying is they don't want ice words all over the place. Does it say anything on here where it's got to be located on the property? It'll still meet, have to meet all the accessory structure regulations. Okay. Not a sewer system. No, no front yard, no yeah. you know, distance off the property lines, all that good stuff. But it sounds like since you struck out, it won't be located so that it's facing the street. That means you could just add another door on the front of your house. You could. That one I took out because, it, I mean, we allow multifamily developments in many of our residential zones, which have multiple doors for space. So, so requiring an internal connection, it, to me, I don't know what that gets you. Um, but if you have an attached accessory apartment, you could. I mean, I think that's probably one that could still fly if you wanted to pull that one back. It's more of a design constraint than anything else. But well, there's nothing prohibiting it, right? You're just saying that you, I mean, if somebody's if somebody's doing it for a family member, they probably would want a, a, a they could a, do it. It's not right, prohibited. right. But the saying that you have to do it if you're renting it out to somebody entirely. You, if not 900 square feet, how many doors and windows can you put in 900 square feet? Right. And they have wall space and right. You're only going to have one door and maybe a window. But don't, for a dwelling, don't you have to have two means of egress? A window and a door is oh, that counts. sufficient. Not two doors. Yeah. Well, the window's big enough. Yeah. Right. So the existing regs prohibited that doorway from facing the road, which I proposed to strike. I think we, I think we could probably get away with it. What I like about that is you don't get, you know, two front, front doors. Front doors. Yeah. And it doesn't start to look like an apartment, but in some zones, I agree with you, where that would fit. But other ones, it's like adding That's another person. front door. Depends how it looks. Yeah, my parents live in a traditional colonial. It has a port a door that we use, and then it has a front door, which I don't know if anybody's ever entered the house from. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. I have to say, I have a front door. door. Are you saying you have two front doors? Come through the garage. Yeah. yeah. And and I'm not suggesting we're you know we scheduled the hearing right now, so we could certainly leave this open and think about it till the next meeting, and, and I can tweak some of this other language and see what it looks like. Um, I guess I would be interested in seeing if somebody has figured out the architectural how you yeah prevent it from being an ice. Well, couldn't it simply just say must must uh, be compliant with the rest of the house, whether it's vinyl sided, wood shaped. Yeah, you know, that, yeah. But sometimes form. people do um, part brick and part Well, brick right, brick yeah, stone, nice stone front, yeah, exactly. siding on the sides. And, right. Well, remember, we don't regulate how someone constructs a house anyways. Yeah. 
if somebody comes in with a single family home that's I meets mean, the building code, wants to texture 111 and paint it or, or put pink and yellow siding, they can do right. what they want. Yeah. <laughs> So we so, can't regulate the architectural style of a single family home, so we gotta be careful. Yeah. But but just I think put something that it's consistent with the right, existing exactly. dwelling or something like that. Yeah. I think I can work yeah. something with most people don't want to look, look like crap anyway. Yeah, which means whatever they they're gonna do, yeah, even though it's more consistent because it's gonna be very difficult to say it's not consistent. It's fine, consistent. Yeah. All right, you're on the right track, Mike. Let me see how I can get a little more creative. Okay. Um, anything else under new business? Nothing under other business? Corresponding. So that brings us to the business meeting and adult use cannabis legislation. So we talked about this before. Um, the uh, state passed, obviously, adult use cannabis regulations, which uh, essentially um, towns have a couple of options. They can do nothing, and uh, we have to then allow these establishments and treat them as if they are retail or other similar um, use. Essentially, if you have a, a cultivator who's cultivating marijuana, we have to treat them the same way we would treat someone who's cultivating flowers. If somebody's selling marijuana, medical marijuana or whatever, we have to treat it the same way we would treat uh, Dollar General or another retail store. Why wouldn't it be treated like liquor? Or well, I'd say it's, it's a controlled it's substance. substance. So you can't just have an open field, right? That you have a potential of youth going in there and stealing well, that, things yeah. like that. So that I don't, I don't know that you can grow it in an open field. I think it would need to, be, it needs to be grown in a facility. And, so so can't you grow it at home? There was a number of Ooh, plants. Yeah. You I think you're, yeah. But this is they're talking about commercial. commercial. Okay. So there are there are eight um, there are eight different types of licenses which will be issued um, ultimately by the Department of Consumer Protection. And so it's cultivator, micro cultivator, retailer, hybrid retailer, product manufacturer, food and beverage manufacturer, packager, delivery, and transport. So um, basically if towns do nothing and someone comes in, we have to treat someone who wants to sell cannabis just like we would retail. Um, well, Control, like I would say, like liquor, maybe. Yeah. Because no, no, like retail. The stuff, the law says we have to treat it like retail. Okay. If we do nothing, so you could sell it in a school zone. Yes. Next door. To well, and there are many, many state laws through the Department of Consumer Protection because these will be licensed at the state level, which will prohibit a whole bunch of things. But at the local level, if retail is allowed in every zone, then the sale of cannabis would be allowed in every zone. If we do nothing, that's what happens. We can adopt regulations to deal with this. Um, the, the state has just basically said, for those of you who don't deal with it, this is how you're gonna have to deal with it. But the town can adopt regulations to restrict where it's allowed, how it's allowed, if you go through that process. Um, so many towns have basically considered um, and are working towards a temporary moratorium to prevent any of these applications from coming in while they work to develop regulations. Um, I guess the fear is, let's say you have a permitted use where, or a zone where it allows this, someone will come in to Ruth and say, I wanna get a zoning permit to put up a sign and establish a retail operation in Bastille Plaza to sell cannabis. So they provide a sign permit, they get a zoning permit, they're good to go. And then they wait a year because they're going through the state process. So they're sort of don't want any of these things to get in ahead of time before the town's going to consider it. So there's one with the, the moratorium. The only other thing that I'll say is that through ordinance, a town can prohibit across the board. Right. Um, and if you guys develop regs which say we want this by special permit, but the town legislative body says we're going to pass an ordinance which prohibits it. That prohibition would supersede anything that we do here. 
So for that, so I'd say let's wait. <laughs> well, well because of town, we don't know what the town was. Yeah, our, the question is, select. what are the selectmen thinking? So if you think there's two things to decide, one would be a moratorium. If you want to do a temporary moratorium, because we don't want to wait too long. And two, if you're thinking that you're leaning towards an all out prohibition, um, I think that the next step would be that I send a letter on behalf of the commission to the board of selectmen saying, we have a moratorium, we're considering this, you know, we want to know what your stance would be just so that we can have that conversation. I know you know, Jay's planning on having a joint discussion wanting to have the board of selectmen and this commission to talk about solar and cannabis. Good, because I think we need to talk to them. Yeah, um, because for sure. I can see doing a moratorium so they don't start popping up right. next to the school and in inappropriate well, places. Here, here's one that could be argued. In the A1, your permitted sale of farm products. So the um, there is the state the state regs that probably overrule that. Well, that's, I'm just curious: is this considered a farm product? So I'm gonna I have it on my phone. I'm not I'm not texting. Um, <laughs> there was a Senate bill in part of 1201. The term agriculture and farming do not include the cultivation of cannabis as defined. Okay. Which means if somebody, all the places that we allow farms, farms can't now start just growing cannabis. So that part we're okay with. But they're going to want to retail. They're like going to want to do a retail outlet. They're going to want to be on Route Five, One Hundred and Forty. They're they're just not selling these. It's Windsor. currently permitted in B One, B Two, the HIFZ by right, and then you have certain things that are allowed by special use permit in the M ones and the the TZ five and the B three. So it's pretty much. I, the, I say we ban it across the board for the whole town. Let Enfield deal with it. No, no tax base. We need more commercial business. I so, would not be in it. I mean, there is some. Yeah, I mean, they, they're going to want farm space. I mean, they're going to want to put a grow operation somewhere, and they're going to want to put a retail operation somewhere. Why do we want Enfield or South Windsor? South Windsor gets everything anyways. So They'll end up we, with it anyways. So something that's important to know is that there are caps. So for every 25,000 people, you are only allowed one so of each type. Yeah. So the max we will have is one retailer, one cultivator, one transporter, one delivery. So it's it's not like this will just be everybody trying to come here. That's why this moratorium thing has been, a lot of towns are pursuing it because everybody's trying to get to be the first one in each market, right? We've had probably, at least five calls to our office or people coming in asking questions and interested and people that are familiar with this area but have production facilities in, in um, mass the the, the um, growing is done in like a big industrial building it's not yeah, outside no. growing because they want to go year round the preliminary so. estimates are that by the way there are 146 retail stores in massachusetts and 40 cultivators for a population of almost 7 million uh, 124 towns to that. ban it, 188 towns allow it. But um, they're suggesting that local tax revenue for each of these would be in the area of one to $200,000. They're expected to generate about $4 million in revenue. Um, the application- For a piece, retail store or for the big scale operation? No, the retail is probably the problem. Because you, I... you tax the product, I think. I, I don't know much. But would that tax go to the state, like the sales tax? Well, we'd get property taxes. We'd get equipment taxes, whatever equipment they have. Uh, I No, I think there's a specific language that says that a portion of that goes back to the town in which it's in. I think Mike, Mike, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Hi, it's Ruth. Oh. Um, I just wanted to share, um, the town can get 3% on the sale. Um, it could potentially go into like social services funding or the like. Uh, the state gets 17%. So it's a total 20% tax. There you go. I know it's 20 because I know somebody buys medical marijuana and they can get their price reduced by 20%. So if they decide to build a, go in the industrial park, build a building and put a big grow operation, and then from here, 
distribute it. Now we're in between, you know, right on 91, they'll be able to distribute it. So they don't have to put a grow operation in this, in this town. Like they don't grow. have to, yeah. but when we want the grow operation with the taxes, the square footage, the Shop lighting, property. the equipment. Yeah. Bring back the dull mushroom plant. <laughs> right. You know, I mean, they're self-contained. They may be able to go in 140 with a grow operation in one of the big lots. People are going to say, what kind of people is going to bring to town? But you'd be surprised. Well, the good news is it's statewide. Yeah. So we're not. It's an unfortunately. I like it or not. I have a facility that's right by the. You got to go through Lee to get to where they have a spot right there. And there's lines, lines, and that, you know, traffic issues. And North, it's amazing. North yeah. Hampton, of course. Yeah. I went to one once out of curiosity when I was in Seattle and I wanted to see what it was. It was a tiny little store. There weren't a lot of people in it, but they were um, <laughs> carting everybody for their ID at the door. And I asked if I could take pictures, and they said as long as I didn't photograph any of the people who worked there. But it was incredibly expensive. And it was like every kind of price. candy and baked good and- Well, I'm surprised. Uber Eats doesn't have a delivery. Yeah. You probably just pick the phone up and, you know. I'm, but it I'm, was in a, I'll say, kind of seedy neighborhood. The one up there is a converted gas station. There's one of the That's kind of the size. It was like the size of an old gas station. Yeah. A little one so they have been there. So, yeah, they're, they're <laughs> estimating that the state will drive up for about 150 yeah. retailers, which will each generate about $4 million as going over that time. Which will result in 100, about $120,000 in tax to the town in which it's located. Um, so the application fees for like the lowest level after a license, two million state, or like two hundred fifty thousand. Oh, I thought like yeah. the cultivator. I think they're close to a million. Yeah, it's some place like a million. Change. So this is not something yeah. that you can't just establish it overnight. It takes it's a, a massive applications to the state. Yeah. So um, I think the only thing that I am looking for from you is if you want me to get on a stick with a more temporary moratorium. Yes, I do. Um, because I all have to refer, it has to go to OPM, it has to go to CROD, text amendment, so I have to refer it. So it's a 35 day hold. Yeah, and I mean. Well, what exactly in short form, what does that mean? It means that we are, we don't have to approve or consider any applications related to cannabis for the period of the moratorium, which is 35 days. No, no, we, oh. I mean, most towns you're seeing about four to six months, okay. which then means during the moratorium, you can discuss with the board of selectmen, you can develop regulations, but nobody can get in ahead of time, to try to get their foot in the door. That's what I'm saying. I'm in I favor agree. of that too. How about you, Joe? Say no, you can. No, 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 no. I just, I think it's a great idea. I think it's a great business opportunity for the town. But I also don't want to have a half a dozen of them in here or just uh, saving their spots to see if yeah, they can come and in. And so I agree. Got, I agree. And we're only going to get one, anyways. Yeah. But it definitely should be a special use permit. It shouldn't, you know, it's got to be something that we can review and we can and really. Not next to the school. Exactly. Yeah. You know, talk that, about that, that it should really, be nowhere by right. It, and to me, the police should have some say in where to. So the, the law says that we can reasonably restrict hours, we can restrict signage, we can restrict proximity to religious institutions, schools, charitable organizations, hospitals, veterans homes, military establishments. Okay. Um, so we have the ability to basically make sure that they're not setting these things up next to schools and other places. So that, that, put, that leans towards special use permit then? Yeah. I mean, we could create, you know, can't be within 500 feet of them. There's certain things, but yeah, I think that we could, we could do that via special use. But I also think we should, in the where it's appropriate, include the place in that discussion because if people use it, eat it, whatever they do with it, right, um, and then the pro the problem with appropriate is appropriate is only in your mind. It might be different in my mind. So if you put down. Appropriate, it doesn't mean to do nothing. 
No, but to me, next to the school is. Well, yeah, well, that, that you could set by standards. I wouldn't standards. want it next to And I think the school. state already does set that by standards with liquor, et cetera. And, and while it's not written anywhere, there is a strong sense that when they wrote this bill, the intent was for it to be treated in the same manner as liquor. No. Yeah. Right. So I think the police should be taking a look at too. But yeah. we, we, we did the Walmart. We made a big mistake. We approved that Walmart, not talking to the police department. Because they say they have drugs. They say more calls to the police department than. I mean, to Walmart and any other place in town, they, it's huge. They're there quite a bit. Yeah, they're so. having a lot of problems with the old Ramada and oh, more more so. But the Walmart there, you know, that's one mistake we made. Next time a big box store comes in here, we got to share them. Yeah, because yeah. They, they get, you know, yeah, how many calls they get, they get a lot. I think we can hear and we never, you know, we never even thought about that. We were entertaining the new Walmart. We had no cleaning. Like, okay, for Walmart's money. It's so, okay. I will, I will um, prepare a language for moratorium temporarily. Do we want, so do we think six months is good? If we sure. develop regulations, if we can certainly remove it early. Mm -hmm. yep. um, so I will get that off and referred so that we can get that in the hopper. Um, Other towns that you work, does that seem to be what's happening? I just did one today. It's hit or miss. There are some towns that aren't really all that concerned because if they have, if they're you know less than fifty thousand people, you have one or two of these establishments. They're not feeling it's that, you know. So it's, it's it seems to be sort of one way or the other. Yeah. There's one town in Connecticut that uh, basically has taken the position that because the federal government has not said that it's 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 allowed, they won't be approving anything and they won't be doing anything. I think they're gonna. That battle. Oh, that battle. Yeah. <laughs> that battle. Okay. I'll get on the They were growing hemp across my parents' house, and people were coming across the street and stealing the hemp. Oh, yeah. You know, they thought it was marijuana, and they put them slide like this is not to eat. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> oh, One season, right? That they were that having their plants all over the place or taking it. Stop talking. Yeah, yeah, it must have been. He didn't care. He's like, I've got another the lights to pop I think they're still pop those around. Okay. Well, we're going on the South Road. So, um, this is for the next one, I'm going to pull this up so that people can post here so we can. Speak to it if he wants to as well, but but um, essentially we have a, a really unique situation um, related to the, the development that was formerly known as South Road. Uh, I'm talking about creative housing. Um, this is a an old military housing, right? Yes. And the town took it on for affordable housing. So the town took it on. Um, not because they wanted to. It, the, the, the nonprofit that ran it went under. And so the town actually took it that way. Um, so essentially, you have all of these properties which are on one piece of property. Oh, um, they're not individual lots? No. So you have all single family ranch style homes. It's just under four acres total, 16 single. Oh, when you houses. drive that, boat, yeah. it's very well maintained. So, yeah, well, the town does a lot of that. Oh, um, or at least on the inside. It's a town road, town across the military. I'm, I'm pulling up. I'm moving right now. Individual houses, all that. Yeah. Yeah. You drive by most times, you never see it. Yeah, it's right here. It's right up, folks. Yeah, I'm pulling up. It's going to pull it up on the big screen. Okay. Pull it up on the big screen. Yeah, you drive by most times, you'll never know it's there. Oh, really? Yeah. I've driven the road just out of curiosity a few times, and you can turn around. I've been down there like once. It's nice. I never knew that you were going by. Here's the property. Show them the military base. It's on the road. That's yeah, right to the cross street. Southern Auto. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Southern Auto. Yeah. Yeah. Parking lots. Yeah. So um, here is the, here's the development. So it's one four acre piece, just under four acres, 16 houses, so roughly four units an acre. Um, they're all individually owned and they pay a fee per month currently to the town. Um, the sewer is run through the backyard. So all these houses discharge out the back of the house to a sewer, which rings the property and ultimately exits. 
Um, the town has, and they're all income restricted. So there, you can, you, you've got to meet, yes, you've got to meet income limit. You've got, got to be under a certain income to be eligible. The town is not in the business of being a landlord, and it's gone through the process of working with the Department of Housing to lift the income restrictions and have them agree that we will basically divest ourselves. And so what will happen is the lease lines will become property lines and they will then own the land which they're currently effectively leasing. And the money they're currently paying to the town in the form of a homeowners association, for lack of a better word, will then be paid to the town in the form of property tax. It's a net wash essentially. Then who will take care of in the center of the circle? They have like nicely mowed and maybe we're still working on that. We, so we'll have to come well, road. we will have to maintain the road. It will be a town road. And right now, currently, we maintain the circle. The theory behind the circle is to turn it into a traditional cul-de-sac where it's all paved, and it'll be one less thing we have to maintain. That's a big area of pay. It is a and it, and, and it's a nice ball field looking kind of can't yeah. stick a playground well, or the, something. The cul-de-sac would shrink. It would just be a 50 foot round cul-de-sac, like a normal size cul-de-sac. Um, and then people will get bigger front yards. They would get a little bit more grass to mow and maybe some some of those driveways are very small. So the people who use yeah. the yeah. cul-de-sac to park their second cars in. Yeah. So it would, you know, give them more opportunity to have and see the new car on the existing road and construct are the three houses on Phelps Road part of it. Or yes. There? They are. Yes. And the driveways go to Phelps Road. And the driveways go to Phelps. There's yeah. three on this side and one on the other side. Has the town yeah. tried to sell that whole yeah. parcel with the houses on it? Or no, not even been discussed. I think that because of the, the income restrictions okay. and the association issues, I don't think it's ever been on sale. So the problem we have is. We don't have a zoning regulation or a zone or anything which that kind of density which would allow yeah. for we had a text amendment a couple of months ago which sought a similar density yeah. <laughs> um but grandmother we don't so the problem is we need to basically be in a position where we can hand these properties off to them so that they're not not performing immediately as they get them oh. um, because we have they have some of them have pools and sheds and fences and, and all these other things <laughs> what I was thinking is like downtown warehouse point. That's your you know, you you've got yeah. about the same density. And yeah, they're all non-conforming, so it's you can't just make it pre-existing non-conforming. Just not. So uh, the, the problem. Nicely no, yeah, there it is. The problem that no one is that they all try to have the PPRs nice bloom landscape. Zoom in a little bit Thank more. You. Is you know, in many of these houses, we have like just a few feet between them. Um, and so if we just drop this in, even using our existing zone. Yeah, so they're about 15 feet off the property line or any of that stuff. Right. There would be there would be no there would be no um, there would be nothing they could do, right? They couldn't put a stoop, they couldn't put an addition, they couldn't put a deck, they couldn't put a shed. Um, and I can't rezone the property, you know, like it's gonna to have to be a subdivision. Yeah, I'm gonna say, can we create a new zone? Well, we could, but it would be like jump, jump, every jump all over. That's the problem, right? We can't create a zone for one property, which yeah. means we'd have to let other people. Yeah. And so, that. so you have currently, you know, even if we went with the most dead zone, this is going to double to quadruple the density somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So lovely the way it is, but we. Yeah. yeah. It's too bad it couldn't stay. <laughs> So um, the goal is to leave it exactly how it is, but but we have to draw those property lines, and that's going to be a 16 lot subdivision. Wow, that's that's you know the, the only way to make that happen. It's got to be some loophole someplace. So I, my my uh, my feeling is on the zoning side for the regulation, this is a clear case for a variance application because there is not one piece of property in town which is similar, which no. is the whole reason variances exist right you know, the, um we may run into some more complicated issues related to the subdivision regs um, because this will be a 16 lot subdivision so we will have street lights and street trees and open space and driveway standards and the roadway standards all that stuff's that. Have to be weighed. and yeah. there's certain things that we you know we may not be able to um but it's 
historic military housing that was built before. Right. All the so, um, you know, I don't want to start recommending that we move in the direction of doing a variance if you guys would prefer to work on some type of overlay or floating type zone or something. Um, but it seems right for me. Yeah. Because it's uh, history. I think when you start overlays and floating type zones, you're, you're opening a can of worms. I, I think the variance is the way to go. So I'll keep you posted on kind of how this. Mike, there are already street bikes there. The road will be the minimum. I mean, it's 18 right there. That's, that's right. almost 19 feet. Yeah. I, we're not that far off of being able to bring the road to code. Yeah. Um, obviously, the sewer, you know, we're working on. But it, 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 it's, it's very important that we do this to get the, the liability of the town off because it costs us over $100,000. They all have external oil tanks. One of them went bad a few years back and we literally, it costs us about $100,000 to mediate, remediate the whole thing. And so, because they're all on because slab we own the property. Yeah. And they're all on slab. on slab. Well, actually they're not slabs. They're eight foot full wall foundations backfilled and then poured slabs. The foundations go eight feet in the deep. Ground. Really? I believe that there might have been fallout shelters in the bottom of them, or they were designed some of it. Yeah. The foundations go down eight feet. I'll bet you. Really? Right. Because we've done a lot of work out there, and they, you know. That was a military standard, probably. Oh, and That's then when it, they, they backfilled it when it was no longer military use. I know. You know, so some patch some ordinance. 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 So the slam and they turn into slam. No, no. The, 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 the foundation. How many foundations are in the slab? Slab the foundation. Eight foot walls and then there's a slab on the top. There was no, there was no second floor all the way down. Okay, we don't know. So how do they do that? They they just poured walls and then all they fill it with dirt. And they we don't. Back, back well, yeah, that's what we're assuming. There's dirt in there. <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah, but they, all the furnaces, everything is is uh, our own closets. It's all. They're, you know they're 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 very similar inside like like mobile homes where all your utilities everything are here or in the attic. Wow. Oh, yeah. But as the years went by, people didn't yeah, upgrade them and change them. Well, oh yeah, them. there's there's you know a lot of them, some, some of them have propane. Really nice. Yeah. You know, I mean they're they put in the heat pumps. <laughs> See, we never had a town owned. We had no. I know. Okay, yeah. Well, they don't own the buildings. They own the no, land. Just land. land. Yeah. Well, that's why Joe's here. That one's good. So um, we'll, we're trying to work through exactly what the smoothest process will be. It seems like probably a variance, but the subdivision stuff is going to create yeah. a complication. So now, okay, do every every one of the residents has to agree to become the landowner now, right? Yes. Is there, is there going to be a purchase out? Or are we already there? had, um, we had uh, last winter a um, meeting with all of them and um, Jay explained everything. Mike Santoro from the Department of Housing was there. Senator Anwar was there explaining everything that needs to happen. But yes, if one person chooses not to, it does not happen. Um, but, but the math, again, they pay a monthly fee and the property tax that they'll pay now being owners is essentially a wash. There's and no and the property transfer will there be they'll be it's sold for a dollar or something to that effect. I don't think there'd be a sale cost if we're going to just transfer the property. They're not we're not the town's not asking for any money on it. Um, That's and they're going to have obviously equity. If you needed to have the dollar for yeah, just the, the hat that it is, a, so that it's not a gifting that, and they're not a gift tax that gets associated. No, with it. but the benefit to the property owner is that they now are going to be the owner of a piece of land for right. zero dollars. Right. Yeah. Um, so we're going working through the process. There's a lot of stuff that needs to happen, but um, I wanted to make sure that the approach, you know, made yeah. sense. I don't see how we can create a zone for one piece of property. And that's not get like sort of can of worms everybody else in the yeah, that's, that's, that's that's the main concern is that whatever we do here can't be duplicated somewhere else. And the reason why this is weighted, we can't. The only zone we would tweak is the MFTD. We have yeah. to create something there, which obviously has been before you for the last month. 
almost a, you know, it was like a year. <laughs> so um, previous own military establishments. <laughs> <laughs> Our grandfather did. Right. Yeah. yeah. Because of the military, they had something. So why would they want to pack them? Sure not. If they are back, they could be out. Trusses across or something. They, yeah. It might be a cemetery. Maybe there was them. plans to do something eventually, but they're eight foot. You know, we didn't anticipate eight foot walls. Why would you drill a hole through the freaking slab? Yeah. Well, maybe you were going to buy one. Buy one. Buy one. Buy one. And then we'll, yeah, check, we'll check, check it out. Check it out. <laughs> <laughs> I go for free. Um, I think qualify with it. Have anything else for the business meeting? Okay, nothing for executive session. Okay, I think we can adjourn. Somebody would like to make a motion. I make a motion that we adjourn. Second. Okay. Aye. All those Aye. in favor? Aye. Okay. The meeting is adjourned at 7 30. Wow, that's. Well, I heard nightmares that you guys were here until.